Hello, hello everybody. Hi, welcome. Great to see you all. Okay, so apologies for my lateness. Um, I've been trying to sort out the measurements for the album class that I'm doing on Friday. I've just had an email from somebody just checking in whether that is happening. Yes, it is. I'm doing an album class. I'll show you the album that we're going to be making uh, again briefly before I get stamping. Um, hi, Lisa, Martina, Lois. Shaz, Barb, Judy, Lisa, uh, Carol, Georgiana, hello, hello, hello. All right, I'm just going to get straight on with that and just show you this. So just very quickly, um, I decided to um, class on Friday, this coming Friday. So if you're interested in doing that with me, I'm going to give measurements ahead of time and also possibly film a little video um to show you how to kind of cut cut the pages out of your paper so you kind of get optimal usage so we're going to be making this little album it just has a little pocket here with two little cards that go in then it has four pages and this is a really easy spine to do there's no kind of complicated spines with this one this is a really super duper easy spine um, to stick in and then we just have this so it's a really good beginner folio album to do because it's it's fairly straightforward um if you don't have magnets um there are a couple of magnets in in there um and there are some in there's one, oh no hold on there's one in there and i can't remember if there's one in there no, there's not any in there. Uh, if you don't have magnets, don't worry. You don't necessarily have to have them. Um, they're only in a couple of spots. Um, you can use, you can put those little Velcro dots later on if you want to. Um, or I can t t explain how to maybe stick a ribbon before, when you go to stick these panels on, you can put a piece of ribbon and have that as your tie. So don't worry if you don't have magnets. All right. And um, there we go. Right, so if you want to do that class, just email me. Um, I, th I think I started to write a list, but I could probably do with an official list. So, um, yeah, I, I think what I'll do is just say email me. So I know a few of you have emailed me already, and I've just not got around to replying because um, I've had a bit of a busy day today sorting out gifts and things that needed to be sent out. By post. Right, I've also realised, look, I've not even tidied away since Friday. So I'm going to throw all my blocks that I don't need right now in here and keep out the ones I do need. Naughty me. Anyway, how is everyone doing? How was your weekend? Hi, Nicole. Hi, Glenna. Hi, Sherry. Great to see you. Who else is on here? Hi, Kelly. Oh, that sounds like a fun book, Cindy. Good, good. Right, so I thought I would just do a really quick little one sheet wonder with you um, because of my, my lateness and also my busyness. So... I know a lot of you really love Magical Meadow, so I'm going to combine Magical Meadow with Joy of Noel, and I'm planning to do a kind of one sheet wonder that can be cut up either into cards or tags. All right, so I'm I might even get around to cutting them and showing you how to do that tonight. So if you like a kind of start to finish video then this is probably going to be a good one for you to watch right um oh, da, 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 da. right is there any other questions no okay right so i'm going to get out the biggest stamp first which is this one here and it's got a really lovely kind of texture to it and i'm going to start with so i'm going to go kind of greys and blues 
and then maybe throw in a hint of colour, other colour later on. But I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do yet. I just, yeah, just wanted a very muted tone. Um, I just so happened to stumble across, oh, that was it. I was watching a video, stumble across a video on YouTube of a lady who went to have uh, tea at the Ritz. And she was also showing the High Street, I think it was the Bond Street, High Street in, in London. And she was showing the fronts of all the very, very high-end shops, uh, including Dior. And um, I noticed that Dior's kind of what some of Dior's theme for Christmas this year is butterflies. And oh, so inspiring. So I had a quick look on the Dior's website and they've got a set of baubles let's see if, if anyone can guess how much these baubles were they're a set of four baubles with what seeming i hope they're hand painted because at that price i really do hope someone's getting the money um <laughs> beautiful kind of almost toile inspired so beautiful sketches but very muted tones um sort of foliage and butterflies um, and maybe bees even. Um, anyway, they're, they're absolutely stunning. And I'm going to try and be inspired by it at some point and do a one sheet wonder based on it. Um, but anyway, their, their Christmas decorations in Bond Street are these massive white butterflies on a gold, like gold background. Um, I think that was it anyway. Or did I go to their website and see it? I don't know. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful. So if you're into butterflies, do go and check out Dior's sort of new sort of collection of sort of Christmassy things right okay so there we've got got smoky slate down uh with a little bit of um f sort of first generation and second generation stamping there just to get a bit of overall coverage there so then we're going to step it up and go a little bit oh and I've just felt something fall on the floor so I'm just going to rescue that thing whatever it was oh this is the way I lose stamps. Oh, oh, I found it. It was on my cardigan. <laughs> okay, that's better. I made the mistake of putting the stamp set in with the box with the stamps that I just took out uh, that I put over there, and um, it had something stuck to it. So I'm not doing that again. All right. So here we have another leaf. Four hundred dollars. Oh, a little bit more than that, US dollars. A little bit more than 400 US dollars. 300 pounds, a bit over 300 pounds. Right, I'm going for grey granite. A thousand Australian dollars. Uh, Lisa, you're probably the closest. Yeah, there were 500 pounds. 500 pounds for four baubles. Actually, I, I I can put the link in the chat if anyone wants to go and see what they look like. <laughs> I sent I sent a link straight to Janine because Janine loves uh, butterflies. But I thought um, Janine loves butterflies, but probably not that that much <laughs> to spend 500 pounds on four baubles. Um, yeah, but there we go. Someone, someone, someone's getting a nice set of baubles. I mean, they obviously sell them somewhere. Um, they are very beautiful. Hi, Claire. Hi, Susan. Good to see you all. Who else is coming that I've not seen? Caroline. Right, let's get on with this. So this is grey granite and this grey certainly has a bit more of a beige tone to it. It's it's not a true grey. Um but it's it's a great little pale neutral to have. Almost a taupe, possibly, kind of colour. I hope they're made of gold at that price. <laughs> they're not, I don't think. Hi, Ivy. Great to see you. Um, I No, they're not made of gold. 
Um, let's have a look what the description says. I will read you the description. Uh, it says, in anticipation of the winter holiday season and its precious moments uh, of sharing, Dior Maison unveils a new collection, uh, collection echoing the Dior Cruise 2024 runaway show presented in Mexico. Well, we're not even in 2024 yet. Anyway, the soulful place, as described by Maria Grazi, Grazia Ciuri, has inspired many artists, including Frida Kahlo, an emblematic figure who guided the spirit of this exclusive line. In infinitely poetic, the butterfly around the world motif imagined by Pietro Ruffo, combined with a reinterpretation of the Poil de Joy, uh, uh, adorns an array of exceptional creations. A multitude of nocturnal butterflies spread their wings and come to life on tableware, linen, table linens, trinkets, candles and notebooks as a final surprise, a vase and a decorative box co created in collaboration with the manufacturer de Emaux de Longui, founded in 1798, complete this selection. Symbols of exceptional craftsmanship the numbered pieces oh they're numbered pieces that makes all the difference <laughs> available in limited edition can be discovered in a series of dual boutiques an invitation to celebrate the magic of dreams and the hush of winter so the ornaments are made from 97 percent glass so they're probably hand blown two percent steel one percent cotton so um yeah they're probably hand blown with a decal it looks like they're a decal put on on top but they are stunning and they are worth a look at just for the inspiration itself um i would say and why not you know i mean there's no way that uh, i will ever have such ornaments grace my tree but it doesn't mean that i can't enjoy the imagery and the artistry that goes behind it and i would say the same for you too let's take inspiration from these you know amazing artists and designers why not um, I'd rather take some and make baubles myself. <laughs> well, I, if you see them, I'm sure you will think they're beautiful. Um, but I'm not spending five hundred pounds. I'd rather. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Humblone probably is. is uh, that's what I imagine. I hope they are at five hundred pounds. Okay, so that was grey granite. Then I'm going to take. Uh, this long one and then I'll go get this one ready so I was thinking of kind of going in um, a bit of a misty moonlight direction um, but don't know whether to head there just yet and where, maybe to go a bit of boho blue with this one and maybe keep misty for um, the berries so we're going for kind of a kind of frosted winter day kind of look with this hi janice so this one can go creeping on lovely to see you ivy it's been a little while for those of you who've not met ivy before um she's been a follower of my channel for a while Busy lady, have you been up to London yet this uh, Christmas? Hi Judy. At the moment I feel this is taking on a bit of a seaweed vibe but um, I'm sure it will change once I um once I get those other berries on here. We're going for frosted frosted meadow look here. Which is I I guess that's what the artists at Stampin' Up were kind of heading for with their whole I mean if you've got the papers that accompany this stamp set you you certainly do get that sort of feel really from the paper it's very beautiful but if you've got the stamp set you can recreate and recreate to your heart's desire you know if you've got the stamps you've got the inks got the paper fantastic just keep 
keep stamping. Right, so that's my balmy, no, boho blue just gone on. I'll just get my little pile of inks up ready. So this is misty moonlight now. Oh, I suspect you must have had a little parcel from Martina, Janice, like I did today. I didn't mean for that stem to start midway there, so I saw something hiding that. Hi Dagmar! No trip to Londonshire, but I did see the Nutcracker in our local Everyman today. It set me in a very Christmassy mood. Oh, I'm sure it did. Oh, how wonderful. I've just been listening to an Andre Ryu album. Um, their latest release, single release, is... Um, oh, I've been listening to it. Hold on. Da, 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 da. Oh. He's released it. If you've got anything like Spotify or um, anything like that, they've just released White Christmas, just the song White Christmas, and it's absolutely beautiful. I don't know, really know who the singer is on it, but she sings it so beautifully, and the orchestration is just wonderful. So, um, yeah, if anyone likes Andre View. Made a boo boo there too. All right, I think that's it for the stamping for the meadow, uh, magical meadow. And now I want to incorporate a few little sprigs of this stamp. Now I'm wondering whether to do it with Knight of Navy. I mean, Janice is here, so that means yes. Um, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't want it everywhere, but because I do also have these ones that I can pop in a little bit more strategically. So, oh, where is my kid Navy? Where have I put you? Hmm. Oh, you're not where you're meant to be. Oh, Janice, have you taken my Knight of Navy? Did I take it somewhere to use? I should double check, I might have got a spare one. A spare old one. Oh, I do. So I really like the contrast of a line art against um, the more watercolour style. I like the contrast of shapes that it offers, um, but I don't want it to fight too much with what I've already stamped. So I'm trying to be a bit conservative in terms of how I use this stamp. I don't want to overuse it. So I'm just kind of like gauging each section and thinking okay where would be a good place to put it 
Um, so here, because I've got quite a lot of light colour, I don't feel that I, you know, I feel that I can pull, pull this in a bit further. And here, because I had all that blue there, I didn't feel I could put it in there. I've got a bit more space here. Okay. All right, liking that. So I have got this little sprig here, which is great for adding, you know, in, in places where the other one couldn't really reach. So I'm happy to kind of pop, pop him in there. Uh, yeah, so I've got lots of blue. I don't really want to put, put this sprig anywhere where I've got lots of that dark blue already happening. So. I wouldn't have mixed the two styles until I met Ruth. Oh, thank you. Well, I've increasingly seen it mixed on commercial cards. If you have a look at, you know, like cards in garden centres, Marks and Spencers, anywhere like that. I noticed that a lot of the artwork does do this. So. Right, I think that's enough there. Um, I could go on and add a few more holly and, and so forth, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, but I do want to add a kind of a reddish tone somewhere. Um, um and i i don't want to kind of add just a red red but um i'm wondering whether to go down a slight sort of cajun craze route um yeah this stamp here must be the first frost stamp set yes yeah 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 uh, G says, I'm not sure how to ask this. Are there any of us that don't celebrate Christmas? Maybe celebrate a different type. I don't know. Please, please do share your thoughts. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware that there are people who don't celebrate Christmas who find my channel. There are people who are JWs. There are uh, people who are Jewish. Um, people who are perhaps of um, um, Hindu, Muslim, maybe. Yeah. So, yeah, there's lots of different. Um, people who follow me who are not necessarily of my own faith so right um, Cajun Craze ah oh, my son has got my Cajun Craze alcohol pen up in his room <sighs> okay I have got the water-based marker but i think that would be too dark i actually want to go for i wanted to use light cajun craze but okay instead i'm going to use su 600 so this is one of the um skin tone style uh, colors that stampin up do so this is su 600 and yeah see now that's that's the sort of color i do want because um it's just a very nice sort of pale very pale sort of terracotta kind of colour. I like I said, I didn't want to go for a full on bright red. And so this is perfect for what I want on this one sheet wonder. And I bet you this is gonna take me as long to do as the whole bit of stamping to colour these in. <laughs> Be typical, won't it? Like, oh yeah, get the stamping done in 10 minutes, but oh, it takes me 10 minutes to colour it in. There we go. Uh, 
Hi, Diane. Nice to see you. We have been told it's supposed to be a hot summer. I'm not sure that's going to happen. Oh, okay. Yes, Shaz, very gently to shake, to shake your tush. You've got to be very gentle with yourself, lady. I have to say, berries are probably the easiest thing to colour in in the world. Because they are circular, I, I find that your hand just naturally kind of goes around in a circle. And if you go around the outer of the berry and then make your way into the centre, it's done in seconds. Literally seconds. I don't know if anyone's counting. So maybe it won't take me 10 minutes. It just feels like it's going to take 10 minutes, but in actual fact, it's not. It's just one of those things that, you know, jobs that you think, oh, I'm going to put off because it's just going to take me ages and it's going to be so boring. You know, like, I don't know, cleaning the shower or, you know, cleaning the pots in the sink. But when you get to it, there's actually a strange satisfaction in doing it. And um, it doesn't take so long. And it's worth it to look back and go, oh, that does look nice. So it's kind of worth doing it. All right. Oh, I've missed a few up there. Uh, it's a good colour. It is Judy, yes. I'm glad I accidentally chose this one. I think if I'd had Cajun Craze in front of me, I would not have gone for this. So it's funny, isn't it, how things work out? It was meant to be this way. And also it's a way of just showing that these, this range of colours are not just for skin tones, but can be very much for sort of more natural based colouring in. So there we go. All right, that is it pretty much done. I mean, the only thing to do is if you wanted to put some dotage on it, you could do. Um, I think I'm going to cheat and just add a bit of dotage with uh, a light of navy marker and I'm just going to do some little uh, splatters across my page and I'm trying to do them sort of from the where I'm, I've got my foliage kind of coming from. So basically I've got these six explosion points. I call them explosion points because basically you have you kind of choose where your epicenter is, you know, where things are coming from. So we've got this explosion point, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then what, so once you've decided where your explosion points are, it kind of makes it easier to decide where to do your stamping. So um, that's what's quite good about this process. Um, now I've done the blue, I'm like, ooh, I fancy a bit of uh, brown in there now. So I'm thinking, what about bit about? Add a bit of crumb cake. I know I didn't use crumb cake, but it's just nice. And now I can't be bothered to twiddle my paper around. I'm just going for it. <laughs> oh, actually, I might just twiddle that on red. Right, how cool is that? I love how this turn, turned out. Look at all that. Look at all that. So oh, gorgeous. Right. Um, so how to cut this up? Let's get our little templates out. Um, I can't look at what anyone else has. <laughs> Look at ways to cut this up. So this is one of the newer templates that I've created. And, um, oh, this is quite a fun one. So you can get two there and then that. Now this one's interesting. Um, I think that's probably the most boring piece. Uh, boring, sorry, rephrase it. The most, um, the piece with the most white space. So potentially you could use that as an inner piece for say that section. Or you could just cut it down down the middle and just have that as a card and that as a card. 
and then give yourself a nice long piece for uh, just a slim line and then two matting layer uh, two pieces to to mat and layer uh, to make another couple of cards um i really did want to look at what tags would look like and i'm thinking while i'm here because i've not done it before i'm going to design in, in front of you how to do one of these templates uh, for tags um, because I don't think I've made one, although I can't find my ruler, which is a bit of a pain. I put it somewhere really safe. Um, oh, hold on, I'll just put that there. So I'm lining it up with my grid if it's in front of me. So in the UK, it just so happens that our card stock, if you cut at just under five centimetre increments, you can get six tags out of a piece of card stock. Now that's completely different for the US size, I'm afraid. Completely different. Uh, for you, you basically would get five across, you wouldn't get the six. Um, if you do them at two inches. So. Right, so I'm going to do a line just under five centimetres. That must be such an odd sensation, Shaz. That must be just the weirdest, the weirdest thing. And this would be the time my Sharpie decides to start running out. Oh, got another one. Oh. So this is basically all I do. I get vellum, decide where I want to um, do my lines and basically just draw in Sharpie. And that is it. So you can either use vellum or you can use plastic, clear plastic. Oh, that one's running out as well. It's not very useful, is it? Oh, is that another one on there? Oh, no, it's a blue one. Oh, well. Oh, I've done that line wrong. <gasps> How did I do that? Oh, for goodness sake, woman. Oh, well. I'm not doing it again. But basically, I can show you how to do halfway, or I can show you how to do short and long tags <laughs> oh right there we go all right so hmm. <laughs> anyway that's how you do it just don't do it like i've done it i've made fold over tags oh yeah i've made fold over tags okay <laughs> Uh, right okay yeah yeah there we go right let's look at another template oh what's the time okay that one's a good one Debbie there we go so you can make a card from that one and that one and if you just wanted them for you so you could get four cards out of it you could get theoretically you could get eight so um 
that would be quite fun. Um, I think what I'm going to do is yes, if I use this as my little template. I'm wondering if I scoop that across and cut the net. Um, hold on, I've just got to do some maths in my head. If I cut that at seven, if I cut that seven, oh, that will be 15, and that'll leave space for three in the middle. Okay, I've got an idea. I've got an idea, everybody. So if I cut that a seven and a half, actually I'll just say seven, I'll say seven, that'll give me plenty. Seven off there, and seven off there. And cut that in half, so that'll be ten and a half them together so I should be able to get three lots of tags from here so if I cut that at five so the reason I cut them to five centimeters is because I've got the old tag punches and I love just cutting straight away those tags tag tops as it were into the tops of these so easy Just got that little bit of scrap there. All right, so I've got six tags out of that then. And then I'm going to make four cards out of these. So I've cut that at ten and a half. There we go. So that would make four really nice cards. And here I can see that I've got a little bit of a gap. Perhaps the that little berry sprig could go into because it's not had it there. But you don't know these things until you've cut it up and kind of see what you're doing. So there we go. Just add a little berry there. And then you can have a look at these individual ones and go, okay, do I need to put anything else in? And just like a bit of that there. little one there oh yeah these definitely need them don't they that one there there we go and then if you wanted to stamp some oh just managed to tuck my finger in there if you wanted to stamp some sentiments um, of course you could easily do that although I would recommend that you punch these out first before stamping so you know exactly where to do your sentiments I'm just grabbing my tag punch now so I can show you how this works Ta -da! actually I'm a bit naughty sometimes I put two at a time in here Makes life a bit easier. Good night, Dagmar. Lovely to see you. All right, so do all those. So these really just need to be, um, maybe have a bit of framing on them. And, oh, look what I've got left over from the day. Oh, I love it when this happens. Four of them. 
So these are the craft note cards and envelopes. And I believe you get 20. It's 20, isn't it? For, um, what did I put Night of Navy? Uh, 20 for about 10 pounds or so. Hi, Nessa. <laughs> for rut. <laughs> yeah. I have very few people in my life who call me rut. There are some. <laughs> So I'm just pulling my cardstock through the ink because I don't feel that I necessarily need to be cutting out a separate piece of card for this. And that is the perfect ratio for this card. Wow, that's worked out really well. And I did not did not plan that, everyone. I know you probably thought that I had, but I really didn't. Thanks, Galena. So 20 cards and envelopes. And I love this craft colour. Have you got someone to walk the dogs for you, Shaz? Thank you, Judy. Oh, I need to update you about... So this evening I, I went out to the pub again. <laughs> For those who don't know, um, there's this really fabulous little micro pub down the road for me. Uh, and my friend, um, a crafty sort of friend um, and her husband renovated it, renovated this fabulous old bakery building and um, they sell craft ales and things there. And... Um, so I popped in there. I wasn't quite sure how many people were going to be there. So my regular lady, she came and made a kit and uh, really enjoyed herself. And then, do you remember a few weeks ago, I told you about these guys who uh, had a wonderful time crafting, uh, so much so that one of them actually bought a kit. Um, and I heard last week that he had done it uh, and given it to his daughters. Anyway, his friend was in there this week who had actually really liked the tag, a tag kit that my friend was doing. So I said, I said, oh, by the way, you, you got me to order all these kits because um, you were so enthusiastic and um, I do have the one that you really liked. I don't know if you want it. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he just, you know, stuck his hand in his pocket and gave me the money. And um, yeah, so he's gone home with a kit to give to his daughter for Christmas. So there we go. So successful evening. Right. Oh, bless him, Charles. The craft card looks like you're w looking through a window. Oh, that, yes, it does. Yeah. I think if you'd emboss, maybe emboss the brown. I oh, see, I can hear Linda's voice in my head, Linda Yamakodo. She'd be like, you should have embossed that. <laughs> so there we go. We've got four cards. One, two, three, four. Um, I know I haven't put sentiments on them, but um, I can decide and do those later. Um, and actually, these would be really beautiful for just a winter birthday, not necessarily for Christmas at all. Um, you could use those for that. 
So one, two, three, four. And then we also have six tags. I've got these beautiful. I mean, I think these are better than Dior, you know. Um, there we go. Hand printed, hand stamped tags. Um, you know, for the special people, for the special people who appreciate that you put time and effort into these sort of things. So, there we go. So six tags and four cards in less than an hour. And to be honest, if I didn't talk so much, I probably could have done it in half an hour. But um, we just have to stop and have a little wee chat, didn't we? So, there we go. Right, thank you so much, everybody, for viewing. Oh, my goodness, 60 of you are all watching. Thank you so, so much. Please do remember to give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed yourself, uh, if you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to do a stamped one sheet wonder using Joy of Noel and... Magical Meadow and was that it that was it joy of noel and magical meadow there we go just two stamp sets and then in terms of color then let's look at the lovely color palette here we've got two grays and two blues uh three blues so we've got gray granite smoky slate boho blue misty moonlight a night of navy so way better than dior <laughs> yes absolutely gorgeous thank you cards too yeah so you can then just choose to put whatever you want in here and actually the sentiments in this set is quite sweet for for a bluey look you've got the colder weather brings us together may the season of sparkle bring a joy and delight and winter wishes so yeah you could have winter wishes happy birthday or something um or you know get well soon any of those right got to go and pick up a thousand eyelets off the floor says nicole oh no oh dear Ooh. there we go right lots of love to everybody and sending big hugs to those of you who um big hug big gentle hugs i was going to say to those of you who are really needing it um and do just email me if you want to do the class on friday we're making an album just a really simple album um so if you're not used to or haven't had a go at this then this might be a good beginner one so you will need dsp you will need some oh i still actually let me tell you what you all need. I did start writing a list. What colour was the marker? Oh, the colour marker. Thank you. Good question, Susan. Are you writing notes? Um, SU600. Now, that is through Go Equipment for, for, your, for you for such magical cards. <laughs> it is, yes. Yeah. It really is, Monty. <laughs> oh, and crumb cake. Yes, the marker pen. So I used the blah, 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 blah. Knight of Navy and crumb cake stamping right marker. Yep. Thank you. Actually, I'll get those out because that will remind me to list that in the description. Thank you. Look at you all hot on it. All right. So you will need... For this project, um, let's look. This all my little sketches and writing out. Uh, some grey board, but not a lot of it. You basically need two pieces of five and a half by four, and then one and a half. So three, three, five and a half, and then five and a half by four again, basically. So out of one twelve by twelve piece of grey board, you'd actually get two albums. I think I've done that correctly. Yeah two albums then you need three four five five pieces of dsp and one two three pieces of cardstock so whether that's a4 or letter size it doesn't matter because i've done the measurements to fit into both 
So you need three pieces of cardstock, five pieces of DSP, some grey board, and then a trimmer with a score blade, scissors, bone folder, double-sided tape or combo, or both. Yeah, so this is for the upcoming class on Friday. This is for Friday's class. We're going to make one of these little mini, mini albums. All right, so if you want to do it, please email me. Um, it's just so that I'm not confused as who's who's booked on. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a last minute organised class, Glenna, instead of Magical Meadow, because we're saving Magical Meadow for when you can do it. Okay, my darling. Right, lots of love to you all. So Friday, this Friday, seven o'clock is this class. Um, but I'm aiming to get out measurements. So today's Tuesday. I should be getting measurements out on Wednesday for anybody who books on. So if you want, I, I can start invoicing folk if they're interested. Okay, but you need to email me, ruthtrice at gmail.com. All right. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Lovely to see you all. Take care for now. And hopefully see you all soon. Oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be here tomorrow night. Sorry, just got to say, we've been invited out for dinner. So it depends how late we get, I get back from dinner. Okay, take care. Bye.